the drastic temperature change, cold and flu season is in full swing. Many of us might already be feeling under the weather and bracing for the upcoming sick season. So joining me now is Dr. Natasha Bouillon, National Medical Director of One Medical. Okay, I was here, you know what, the change in temps, the roller coaster. I mean, we've had 60s, 70s, 80s. Now we're going to go into a dive for next week. Does it actually affect our bodies? You know, it does. When we see rapidly changing temperatures, we actually see an increase in asthma exacerbations and an increase in respiratory infections wow. and doctors think there's a couple reasons why when the temperature changes really quickly we see poor air quality that can cause the asthma exacerbations and then we also tend to see changes in barometric pressure mm -hmm. and so people get headaches they don't feel as good and then finally when we are in cold and dry air right. viruses tend to linger in the air longer and that's why people can actually get sick more mm -hmm. and so you might see more people with respiratory infections and URIs in the coming weeks. Okay so I like to prepare prepare for the upcoming sick season. So what should we have in our medicine cabinet? Yeah, there's a couple of things that I recommend people just keep on hand. So the thing that I like to reach for is pseudoephedrine. So mm -hmm. that's in things like Sudafed, Advil, cold and sinus. It's a nasal decongestion and it works really well. And so I tell people when you start to get that runny stuffy nose, yeah. it's the first thing you should reach for because it can help dry out your sinuses and also help you avoid things like the nasal drip, the sore throat. Yeah. Now a caution with pseudoephedrine, you should use it um, with caution if you have have high blood pressure and also it's not over the counter it's behind the counter that's right don't you have to show your you driver's your license yeah because some people would use a lot of it and basically abuse it use right. it for making meth or other illicit substances and so we do track how many people are taking that and so you have to show your id okay you know, the other things i reach for is for a cough mm -hmm. wifedicin is good for a wet cough because it's an expectorant mm. whereas dextromethorphan the dm medication yes. that's good for a dry cough because okay. it's basically a cough suppressant and so kind of distinguishing those two what, and then, those are big words that I can barely pronounce, okay. but what would what would medicines that I would be yeah. aware of? So guifenesin is in things like mucinex oh, or robitussin. Got and it. then anything that has DM in it, so like robitussin DM, that yes. has dextromethorphan. So know when you want to take something for a wet cough versus a dry cough. Okay. And then of course fever reducers are also good to have yeah. on hand, ibuprofen, acetaminophen. Mm -hmm. And then I always say a humidifier. That's like one of the best things that's soothing when you I have an upper that. respiratory infection. Yeah, that's so true. Okay, so this is interesting. It was recently in the news, if you'll remember here, that phenylephrine, am I saying right? Correct. Phenylephrine that the FDA apparently is considering a ban on this drug because apparently new evidence showed that it's no more effective than a dummy pill. So this is, you know, a big deal, very concerning. Should people then even buy medication that has this? Because, I mean, it's in Sudafed. It's in NyQuil. I mean, what should we do? Now, so you're right. So oral phenylephrine, it's been shown not to be effective. It just doesn't work. And that's because oral phenylephrine, it doesn't absorb into our body. It's less than 1% is absorbed into our body. Now, inhaled phenylephrine, it is effective as a nasal decongestant. So people can use that. But here's what I tell people. Read the labels. Because a lot of these cough and cold medications, if they have oral phenylephrine, well, that doesn't work. But they might have other ingredients that do work. So if you already have this in your medicine cabinet, look for guaifenesin. Medicine, look for dextromethorphan, look for other medications that you might need that could help you. But if there is a product with oral phenylephrine alone, okay. I tell people don't buy it. It's not effective. And You're if it's wasting. in your medicine cabinet and it's oral phenylephrine alone, just toss it out. Good to know. Okay, what about some other things that I've always heard of, like elderberry? You know, um, what else is there? Echinacea. Echinacea. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, these supplements, they don't have a lot of evidence behind them. There's some research studies that show it might shorten the duration of a cold, but there's a lot of other studies that show it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. And so when people want supplements, I always say zinc and vitamin C, those two are key. Those can actually mm -hmm. shorten the duration of a cold if you take both of those at the first sign of a cold. So I always have those in my medicine cabinet. First sign of a cold, but not like preventative. It's not like if I were to take zinc kind of, I don't know, daily, right. it won't yeah. do much. And there's evidence that shows there's people that take zinc and vitamin C daily and it yeah. doesn't prevent you from getting a cold. I it see. only reduces the duration if you take it at the first right sign. Right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. All right, great information, Thank Natasha. So Always great to have you. Thank you.